world of sports, well, take a deep breath, Maxi Walker, because you're going to need it. This is an action-packed show. Yeah, it's one hell of a show, and it's pretty hard to know where to start. But one man whose vocal cords are in fine fettle on Golden Slipper Afternoon is Johnny Tapp. Thanks a lot, Max. Well, the Sydney Turf Club couldn't have ordered a better day than this one. Sydney is wearing her best autumn gown, and the Rose Hill track is in scintillating order, as it was last Saturday when they ran no less than six records, and they might run another one in the Golden Slipper today, Ken. I'll go close, John. Bounding away in Sadapa hold the race record at 199. They've both broken 110. I reckon today's winner's got to do the same. There'll be a lot of speed on up front. Razor Rhythm will go quick. Jester Royale will fly. Cloudlet will kick up. It's going to be a hell of a race, but I think the winner will come from back in the field a little. I'm tipping Terse, the Warwick Farm Colt. I reckon he'll settle about 6th or 7th, get to the lead in the last furlong and get the prize. Bold promises an absolute crackerjack filly. She'll be rattling home. I doubt if she can catch him. Terse to win from Bold Promise. The best two roughies, Diddy Do It and Cloudlet. And Maurice Parkman has been casting an eye over the crackerjack fillies of the two-legged variety at Rose Hill. And there's plenty of thoroughbreds out there today, Taffy. They might say there's a recession on, but I don't know. There's still a lot of money being spent on those dresses. We'll bring you all the colour a bit later in the show. And Wide World of Sports takes you from Rose Hill Racecourse to the Macquarie Ice Rink in Sydney and his Darrell Eastlake. Thanks, Taffy. Racing days of the year. Here's Kenny Keller out at Rose Hill. Kenny, it's got to be a magnificent atmosphere out there, but let's hope you can do a bit better today than you did last week. <laughs> By golly, you're a tough task, Master <laughs> Maxie Walker. Look, I tipped a 5-1 to one winner last week, Liverstone Elaine. You're tougher than Bobby Simpson. <laughs> I don't know who handled you in your cricket days, but by golly, I hope they give you a few kicks up the pants because you're sure giving them to me. It is a super day here at Rose Hill. Five races live on the wide world of sports, including the 1991 Golden Slipper. First up, race three we're doing at 1.35 Eastern Time, and that's the best field of fillies assembled in Australia this year. Whist, the best filly in New South Wales, versus Mannerism, the best filly in Victoria, versus Let's Gore, the best filly in New Zealand. I'm staying parochial. I'm tipping number one, Whisked. The Golden Slipper is race four. We'll be televising that live right across the nation. A tough race. I think the Terse, Bold Promise, Diddy Do It and Cloudlet are the four best chances. I'm going for number three, Terse, to be ridden by Shane Dye, who's already ridden the winner here on Golden Slipper Day, and he's ridden the last two winners of the Golden Slipper. Three Terse to beat Bold Promise in the 1991 Slipper. The Queen of the Turf Stakes is uh, race five. I'm going for number four, Ice Cream Sunday. I think she can beat the top weight, Ricochet Rosie. A terrific run last start. Drawn well today. I reckon she'll get home first. In race six, the BMW, super duper weight for age race. Super imposed to go over the $3 million barrier. He'll be short odds, but it'll be a cakewalk. Number one, super imposed. And in race seven, now I do think this will win. And if Maxi Walker's listening, he should have $10 each way. Number four, Spot the Rock in race seven. Did you get that, mate? Spot the Rock, I got it. Kenny Callender, i got to tell you, earlier in the week I picked Terse for the uh, Golden Slipper. And one of the reasons I picked Terse, I said, because Kenny Callender hasn't picked it yet. <laughs> and I pick up the paper today and you've done it. I don't know what to do. I've got me spies at, at your place, Kenny, <laughs> but I reckon it'll be very hard to beat. OK, mate, all the best. Thank you. Yeah. And we'll be keeping you in touch with all the glamour out there at Rose Hill right throughout the afternoon, Maxie. Yes, plus uh, we'll have all the best bets from this year's footy and we'll be announcing the winners in our solo sports star competition. We've been running a competition to see if you agree with our judges' choice for the solo sports star of the year. And I guess you've been wondering if you got it right. Yes, our solo sports star was Australia's world champion walker, Kerry Saxby. Congratulations to Ozzy Pratt of West Beach, South Australia, who has won a two-week trip for two to any wide world of sports event of his choice. Congratulations also to our five state winners who have each won $1,000 in cash courtesy of Solo and Wide World of Sports. And our thanks goes to all those thousands of other good sports who took time and trouble to enter our Solo Sports Star competition. Congratulations to all those winners. A little later, we'll meet a talent who swapped the roar of the sporting crowd for the smell of grease paint. And we'll come clean with a surfing classic. Don't go away. You're watching the one and only Wide World of Sports. Let's pack the papers 
on one of the greatest horses in history. Hitched in town, breaks the judge, and it's a million dollars in the purse. Well, that certainly brought back memories for me. Uh, one of the all-time greats, Kingston Town, who had to be put down uh, yesterday at the Kingston Park Stud in Victoria when uh, a shattered leg failed to heal and failed to respond to treatment and certainly the toughest decision in the life of owner-breeder David Haynes. The thing I remember most about Kingston Town uh, was the amazing acceleration. He could go just as fast at the end of two miles as he could at the end of 1,200 metres. And there is no doubt, as a racing commentator, he is the best horse I ever had the pleasure to call in a race. Ken, it was just like Kingston Town uh, to pass away on the eve of the Golden Slipper. He was always the king and he always loved the accolades and I think he was a little tired of these precocious two-year-olds getting all of the publicity. Probably he was, John. The thing that I remember most about him was that he could change gears. He could... Uh hop into top around the back of the course, sprint up to the leaders, then drop back into about third or fourth gear, relax, and then find top again in the home straight. There's only been about two or three horses that I can remember that could make two or three sprints in a race. Uh, a very, very tough thing to do for a horse. Kingston Town did it, and he did it regularly. I think he was probably all round the best horse I've seen. Anyway, we're not uh, quite into the Kingston Town category in the Storm Queen Stakes, but I think this is the best field of fillies assembled in Australasia this season. From the top, number one risk, the Sydney champion is at 11 to 4. Let's go, the New Zealand star is at about 4 to 1. The Victorian mannerism holds favouritism at the moment at about 9 to 4, $3.20. Rockets Galore, another Melbourne horse, is at 12 to 1, all mined from Sydney at 11 to 2. Let's hurry, a solid Sydney horse at 14 to 1. Marinella, another Sydney horse getting out to 10 to 1. And then the Ruffies, 33 to 1 strokes, 60 to 1 Jovian, and 100 to 1 at River Tour. I've got my money on Whist. I hope the hometown girl can salute. Here's Johnny. Right, Ken, we'll see and get, if we can get a home for you. Whisked, a very good filly trained by Graham Begg and ridden by Gavin Duffy. And if you're looking for Whisked uh, in this television coverage, she's easy to see in a red jacket and a white cap. Very conspicuous colours. No sign of a start in the Storm Queen. Looking at the closed circuit monitor, they look to be all there. Rockets galore, looks to be facing up well in the gates. Marinella. Now one of the runners in about gate six is giving trouble. Standing very splay footed. It might be whisked, I think, giving the trouble. It looks like whisked, yes, red with a white cap. Yes, whisked was delaying the start. She's standing very splay footed and uh, tending to lean over to one side of the gate. Starter not satisfied with them. Now they're right, gates fly, they're off and running as the flag comes down and they'll be in view in a matter of moments and here they come and all mine went straight to the lead over River Tour, Marinella followed by Let's Gore. Whist is just behind the leaders when they get going, a bit deep over that crossing followed by Joe Van, Rockets Galore and then Strokes and Marinella uh, getting well back as Mannerism and Let's Hurry on the outside as last in the run to the 1600 metres mark and the leaders have pulled up and they're cantering now with River Tour pulling double in front, showed the way to Let's Gore on the outside of all mine who's ripping and reefing and throwing the head about marinella moving into fourth spot followed by joe van whist on the outside and then rockets galore let's hurry was racing very erratically at the tail of the field wanted to veer off the track around that first turn but shane die is going to take off on let's hurry and there she goes right around the outside now and she grabs the lead at the 1200 mark let's hurry has gone from last she was racing very ungenerously whilst under restraint now she's in front and die puts on the brakes again let's hurry leads over river tour in third place let's score all mine giving ken russell a torrid ride has been pulling very hard from the outset and then marinella between horses wished on the outside joe van on the fence then rockets galore followed by mannerism and dropping out last is strokes as they come to the 800 mark let's hurry about a neck on river tour all mine is next on the inside of let's go followed by marinella wished is starting to pull a bit the pace is still amazingly slow there goes cassidy on mannerism now taking off right around the outside none of these riders back in the field are happy with the pace but to the turn and now they're starting to sprint. Let's hurry, led from River Tour. Let's go. Mannerism has carted four and five deep on the turn, followed by All Mine. Back behind those whist and strokes is coming right around the field. Into the stretch now, and Let's hurry, led All Mine is after it quickly, getting through near the fence. Marinella further out. Mannerism followed by whist, but All Mine is the leader at the 200. Marinella getting the rails run. They're clear of Mannerism and whist. All Mine joined by Marinella getting through on the fence. All Mine and Marinella. Marinella and All Mine are coming to the line. 
mine locked together. All mine has done a big job to win after pulling ferociously in the run. All mine beat Marinella, Mannerism third, and then Whist and Let's Gore, Rockets Galore at the head of the other strokes, followed by Joe Van and Let's Hurry, and tailed off his river tour in a very slowly run Storm Queen stakes. Good, very good win to All Mine, who pulled harder than anything in the race and still managed to get there. Number five, All Mine, $7.60 and $2. Marinella second. Number seven, a place dividend of two seventy, And Mannerism will be third. Number three, a place dividend of one fifty. So the numbers on the Storm Queen will be five, seven and three, Ken. Yes, John, uh, all mine, a stable mate of Triskay, trained by Jack Denham for the Whites, uh, was too good in the Storm Queen stakes, but we've got to say it was run at a muddling space, uh, a muddling pace. Marinella looked to be holding uh, uh, all mine for a few strides, but Russell got to work on the filly in the white colours. All mine did better in the last 50 or 60 metres, and all mine won clearly from Marinella with Mannerism, the Melbourne star, who went round the field coming to the turn, uh, holding on for third place. A muddling run, Storm Queen stakes. I don't think it'll hold a lot of form when we look towards the AJC Oaks. That was the first of our, race, uh, our live racing coverage uh, from Rose Hill today. We've got four more races to go shortly on the wide world of sports. over 2,000 metres. The correct numbers, five, seven and three. First, All Mine paid $7.60 and $2. Second, number seven, Marinella, $2.70. And third, number three, Mannerism at $1.50. And Kenny Callender has a tip for Sydney Race 4, the big one, the Tui's Golden Slipper. It's number three, Terse, and a third one there for Shane Dye if he wins it in a row. Now the Shield final progress, and I hear that it's Golden Slipper Day out at Rose Hill and talking to a couple of leading personalities with a special interest in today's $2 million event is our own Anne-Marie Sparkman. Sterling, nervous today? Uh, Anne-Marie, very, very nervous. You know, um, it's all fingers crossed and the planning has gone uh, accurate, so hopefully we can win it today. Did you wake up early this morning and start thinking about that race and what might happen? Oh, sure, you know, it's... All eyes were on Bob Promise and that, and uh, you know, it was the same procedure as we've done all right the right way through. You know, she went down for just a little bit of a jog there and uh, took her back, and we just got dressed up and back into the box. And I just hopefully we can win it today with a bit of lady luck, you know, that's all we can do. Bob Hoisted, how do you see Citizens' chances today in the BMW? Oh, I think he should run very well. He's a typical mile now, or 2,400 metre horse. That's his uh, going races. He's always raced well at Rose Hill, and uh, he'll give it a big shake. A very small field? Only small field, and it may be a uh, muddling run race, but that shouldn't disturb him too much, and uh, it doesn't really matter. He's got a boy on him who knows his way around uh, Rose Hill, and he can adopt the tactics as well as the others. Anne-Marie Sparkman out there at Rose Hill. We've got a big program this afternoon, including the Golden Slipper. We've got four more big races to come. You know, uh, Billy Shakespeare once wrote, all the world's a stage. <laughs> Well, there she is, unbeaten in five starts, the golden slipper favourite, Bold Promise. You know the old adage, you can't judge a book by its cover. I don't think that's ever been more forcibly illustrated uh, than in the case of Bold Promise, who is a plain, insignificant little filly who cost $40,000 as a yearling on the Gold Coast. Uh, but when she hits top gear, she's all racehorse, Ken. She certainly looks like a... She looks like a Morris Miner with a Rolls-Royce engine. Yes, John, she's only a little lady, but uh, the punters have rallied to her. She's the uh, shortest-priced slipper favourite for a quarter of a century. If you backed her on the New South Wales TAB and you've put $10 on her, you're only going to get your 10 and another 10 back because she's at even money on the tote. And uh, there's only three runners, Big Dreams, Terse and Bold Promise, who are under double-figure odds. Let's look at the prices. Number one, Big Dreams, he loosened two plates early uh, before he went out onto the track, but uh, he went out very composed and Wayne Harris took his time getting the big colt round to the start. He's at seven to one. Kenan Hoyes from South Australia from the David Hay stable is at 20 to one. Terse, we better make him about nine to two. He's showing $5.80 for each dollar invested, 4.8 to one, just over four and a half to one. 
30 to 1 in Matilla, trained by Tommy Hughes at Flemington. 80 to 1 saw Marnie. He's down from Queensland from the Bruce McLaughlin stables. Did he do it? Trained by Rick Hall Lacey in Melbourne is a 16 to 1 chance, ridden by the four-time successful slipper jockey Ronnie Quinton, the best slipper jockey of them all. Chief headhunter is Jimmy Cassidy's mount. He's a roughie at 40 to 1. Bull Promise, a clear-cut favourite. Yours for theirs. Even money. $2 even for each dollar invested. Raise a rhythm, firming a little now. The main gun from the Colin Hay from the David Hayes stable, I should say. Force of habit there. To be ridden by the stable's number one rider, Michael Clark. Raise a rhythm is at 11 to 1. Pippi War, trained by Jack Denham. Uh, who's previously won a uh, slipper with Mars Gay, is at 16 to 1. Chardé at 100 to 1. Jester Royale, the likely leader, big, strong, grey filly from Newcastle. She's at 33 to 1 to be ridden by the leader in the Sydney Jockeys Premiership, Darren Biedman. Cloudlet, another one who'll be up there early. She's also at 33 to 1. And v &A hasn't got many friends. She's out to 50 to 1 to race in the famous red with the white cap. The colours carried by Baguette, who was one of our most famous slipper winners when he was ridden by George Moore. You can feel the tension mounting. It's a great race, the Golden Slipper. And to call it a great caller, Johnny Tapp. Thanks, Ken. Uh, and uh, this is a big one with $2 million staring them in the face. The first slipper in 1957 carried 10,000 pounds. That was Terse you just saw going in in the maroon colours with the gold band. We had a report that Shane Dye, when walking out of the jockey's room earlier today, was actually stung on the hand by a bee, which uh, has given him no trouble, fortunately, and uh, he's not suffering any swelling or pain as a result of it. Now, there's Vionne coming up into the gates in the colours of the 1970 slipper winner, Baguette. Now, his chief headhunter going up into the gates, and that paves the way for the locally trained Chardé. To complete the line, Chardé is going to be the last into the stalls, and they're just about set now for the Tui's Golden Slipper, 1991. Now, starter Billy Dale's job is to get them away to a good level start, and he's on his stand, and uh, like most people, no doubt the starter feels a butterfly or two at this moment. A couple of the riders not happy, but they're off in the slipper. Bull Promise missed the kick. Bull Promise is a clear last out of the starting gate. Sormani began brilliantly and so did Cloudlet Vionne and Chief Headhunter going very fast soon after the start. Big Dreams has bounded away into a beautiful spot and then Razor Rhythm and Canonizers trapped out deep followed by Terse Jester Royale. Bull Promise improving quickly along the fence and then Umatilla followed by Did He Do It. Pippi War second last and tailed off his Chardé. Vionne went to the lead through the gap onto the course proper by a little more than a length to Sormani on the outside of Cloudlet and then Razor a rhythm big dreams and right off the track canonized followed by terse who's hard ridden at the head of the others chief headhunter jester royale can't get on the track bull promise midfield on the fence and she'll need luck to get through that bunch of horses further back as yuma tiller followed by did he do it but heads a turn for home in the slipper and vionne is clear vionne by more than a length to cloudlet followed by canonize and then uh, raise a rhythm terse starting to wind up at the head of the others big dreams and bull promise not doing enough vionne still in front canonize and terse big dreams Teams can't reach them. Vionne tackled by Terse and Canonize. It's another one for Shane Dye. Terse wins the slipper. Terse beat Canonize. Third big dreams. Fourth Vionne who ran a big race. And then Pippi War. Bull Promise missed the kick and never got in the race. Followed by Diddy Do It. Cloudlet Razor Rhythm. Chardé well back in the field. Then Chief Headhunter Sormani. And back at the tail of the field, Jester Royale in company with Yuma Tiller in the 1991 Tui's Golden Slipper Stakes. Shane Dye makes it a hat-trick of wins in this great two-year-old race. Kortzer, Canny Lad and Terse. A fantastic hat-trick to this expatriate New Zealand jockey who has taken Australian racing by storm. Number three, Terse. $5.70 and $1.90 and it's Clary Connor's first golden slipper win. Now second will be number two, Canonize, Peter Hutchinson to pay $4.90 and third, number one, Big Dreams, to pay $2.30. There are the numbers, three, two, one. What a jockey, Ken. Yeah, what a jockey. Three in a row to Shane Dye. And there he is, Terse, beating Canonize. Big Dreams gets up for third to beat V&A. And, and uh, the man of the moment, the trainer of the winner, is Clary Connors. Congratulations, Clary. Clary, congratulations, son. He's waiting for his wife to come in. What a great moment. Congratulations, Karen. Here is his wife, Mari Connors. What a great moment for them. Congratulations, mate. 
Surely must be your proudest moment on the race course. I think so. <laughs> you even dipped him. <laughs> Gee, that was a hurdle. Good on you, son. <laughs> Clary, what, uh, when did you think the horse was going to win the race? About um, 50 metres from home. <laughs> Good on you, son. You're very much overcome. You've had a, a champion in research and another one on the way yeah. in this cup. Good on you, son. <laughs> Thank you very and much. And what about Murray? How was <laughs> She's lost for words. Clary Connors, beautiful to see that his greatest moment of triumph, he wanted to uh, call for his wife. Uh, he, there was a story about Clary and his wife in the paper during the week. She knew nothing about horses till she married Clary 22 years ago, but she no sure knows plenty about him now. Congratulations to Clary Connors, John, and what a performance by Shane Dye. Yes, he's never say Dye might be a better name than Shane because he just never knows when he's beaten this New Zealand wonder boy. Head down, tail up, and just don't give up. Don't stop hammering. And Terse has now taken his record to six wins from eight starts. Back to you, Ken. Yes, John, thanks very much. With me now is Clary Connors Sr., the father of the winning trainer of the Golden Slipper. And Clary, I think I can say, taught him everything he knows. Well, I hope so. And I, I've apparently done a damn good job because he does all right, doesn't he? My word, he does. You must be a very proud oh, man today. I'm very proud of him, yes. Yeah. Him and the horse. And, uh, and the grandson, the strapper, so it's a family thing. You know? My word, it is young Mark Strapper. Yes, well, uh, he's a foreman. He's, he's in charge of the horse. <laughs> Mate, yeah. uh, did you like the horse going into the race? Did you of think course, it? didn't think he'd get beat. Good on you. How could you? Well, you trained, he'd done everything perfect. When were you starting to cheer? Uh, oh, uh, when, only about 150 yards out because I thought he mightn't be going to get through in time, you know, but he made it. Be a big and night. Thanks to, thanks, to, thanks to... Dies great riding. I don't know be, anybody else could have won on him. Be a big night at Warwick Farm tonight. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but I suppose so. Good on you. Clary Connor's a great trainer himself, and he certainly passed on what he knows to his son, Clary Jr. Johnny. Good on you, Ken. Uh, these are the moments that make uh, racing all worthwhile. These magic moments when emotions run high, when emotions are absolutely unbridled. And I think I just saw the Rose Hill sun glinting on a tear uh, trickling from Shane Dye's eye as he came back. Now, here's a bloke who's won three golden slippers and a Melbourne Cup. You would think there'd be no more novelty involved in winning a big race, but I'm, I'm sure young Shane just shed a tear as he came back in. Congratulations to all concerned. The magic of the slipper subsides. Very shortly, we'll see the painter going over to the little statue adjacent to the winning post, and the colours of Terse will be painted on, and uh, he'll stand there in all his glory for another 12 months. OK. <laughs> That's it. You've seen the Golden Slipper on Wide World of Sports. The 1991 Golden Slipper has been run and won. An extraordinary hat trick to Shane Dye, so let's check those results and New South Wales TAB dividends. The correct numbers, 3, 2 and 1. And of course, congratulations too to Kenny Callender. He tipped Terse at $5.70 and $1.90. Second number two, Canonize, $4.90. And third number one, Big Dreams, $2.30. And Kenny has a tip for Sydney Race 5. It is number four, Ice Cream Sunday. The AFL. Two, eight. And as tradition demands, the jockey at uh, Rose Hill being painted with the winning colours of Terse, the winner of the 1991 Golden Slipper. Wonderful pictures out at Rose Hill, more racing to come. Scarborough Beach, Western Australia. Johnny Jelly Roll Tap, tinkling the ivories. And here he is, the vocals limbering up for another big call. Tappy, I bet you never realised we'd be playing that so many months later. It's a big hit. Yeah, and I know who was responsible for dragging it out of the archives too, <laughs> Mr K Sutcliffe. I can't think of a better place to be than the sunny side of the street. And that's where Kenny Callender is right now because uh, picking big race winners weeks before the event is quite an art. The secret is not to be swayed by the coat pullers in the week or ten days leading up to the race. But Ken's been a terse fan all along and he stuck fast and most emphatically. Good on you, Ken. 
about time, eh, Johnny? You're only as good as your last winner. Let's hope the next one's just as good. Her name is Ice Cream Sunday. She's about a five to one chance and she's got a super hope. Uh, the two favourites in the betting ring are stable mates. Uh, TAB number one, Ricochet Rosie, and TAB number nine, Painted Blue. Let's look at the prices. On the tote, Ricochet Rosie is paying $3.90, almost three to one. She's been well backed in the ring. They bet better odds than that halfway through betting. Just Trish is at nine to one. Twenties Quicksilver Cindy, five to one my pick. Go girl, ice cream Sunday. As Johnny Tap usually says, she'll take a lot of licking. 16 to one Happy Sailing, six to one Twiglet, nine Quiet Queen, 80 All Stormy. Now Painted Blue's a bit shorter with bookies, but she's four, five dollars ten, four to one on the tote. 40 deep pile, 60 seasoning, 30 to Sooty from Melbourne, 100 fasciola, new acquaintances are scratching, road to glories are roughly at 50, and so are the rest of them. 100 Argyle cut, Starlight Angel is a stable mate of the two favourites, trained by Guy Walter, Ricochet Rosie, and Painted Blue, and rarely caught is a scratching. They're the prices on the Queen of the Turf Stakes, and Johnny, you'll complete my day if you can call Ice Cream Sunday licking her opposition. Right now, Ken, I'll do my best. Gee, she's an honest mare. She just doesn't know when she's beaten ice cream Sunday. Ron Quinton's had a pretty quiet day so far. He was out of a place on Did He Do It in the slipper, but he's on ice cream Sunday, and he will give her every conceivable chance. I noticed a very dejected little character down in the parade yard shortly before they went out for this race, a jockey called Neil Payne, looking very lonely, very forlorn, and very disappointed. Neil Payne was Terse's regular jockey, before being beaten on the horse in the William Inglis Classic uh, early this year. He lost the ride after that defeat to Shane Dye. The rest is history, and Neil Payne is licking his wounds. That's racing. What a leveller. <coughs> Starter Billy Dale coming over now to dispatch the field in the Queen of the Turf Stakes. Big field. Lights flashing on top, and they're all set. 1,500 metres with a good run to the first turn. Ready to break. A couple of riders not happy calling out to the starter. They're off and running in the Queen of the Turf. And slow to move at the start, Starlight Angel, Deep Pile and Fasciola. First out is Argyle Cut. Tasuti began well and so did Quicksilver Cindy, followed by Ice Cream Sunday and then Twiglet. Quiet Queen in a good spot when they get going. Ricochet Rosie, midfield on the fence, followed by Road to Glory. Further back is Painted Blue and then All Stormy and Happy Sailing can't get on the track, followed by Deep Pile, Just Trish. Fasciola well back with Seasoning and Starlight Angel is last after that slow start to the 1,000. And Tasuti went to the front by a length and a half to Quicksilver. Silver Cindy, three quarters away as Argyle cut a nectar twiglet on the outside, a length ice cream Sunday, one off the fence. On the rails then Ricochet Rosie, followed by Road to Glory, Quiet Queen midfield being ridden a bit. At the head of the others, All Stormy, followed by Happy Sailing, right off the track on the outside of Just Trish. Further back, Deep Pile, followed by Painted Blue, and then Starlight Angel, Fasciola, and Seasoning has dropped out last as they near the turn. 500 to go to Suti, the leader, over Quick Silver Cindy, and looming up on the outside is Twiglet as they turn for home. On the fence, Argyle cut ice cream Sunday, looking for a run. Ricochet Rosie has bailed up on the fence at the moment. Dittman is looking for an inside run as they come to the 300 mark. To Sooty led from Argyle cut Twiglet, and then Quicksilver Cindy and Ricochet getting a rails run. Here she comes, the little grey mare. Ricochet Rosie has burst through on the fence, left them standing, and away goes Ricochet Rosie. Argyle cut running on well, but Ricochet Rosie trots in, one by more than two lengths to Argyle cut. To Sooty has run third, and then Twiglet. Quicksilver Cindy, Ice Cream Sunday, Deep Pile Seasoning and Painted Blue. All Stormy next and then Just Trish, Quiet Queen, Happy Sailing, a long way back, Starlight Angel with Road to Glory and absolute last to finish is Fasciola in the Queen of the Turf Stakes. Well, she loves Mick. Ricochet Rosie. Got a rails run 100 metres out and just left them standing. Ricochet Rosie to pay $4 and $1.90. Second will be 15. Argyle cut, or 16 rather, Argyle cut, a place dividend of $38, stable mate to the slipper winner. And third, a few of them involved. I'm just trying to remember what I call third, Ken. Yeah, Tasuti third, John in the red cap over on the rails there. But uh, Ricochet Rosie, touch of class, Mick's just looking over his shoulder. He said, where have you got to? Argyle cut, hanging on for second, and Tasuti just last to run third ahead of Quicksilver Cindy and Twiglet and a Road to Glory and the horse I tipped up.